Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by an anonymous donor from Toronto, Ontario, for the intentions of her family and friends, and in thanksgiving. And we know that this television mass brings meaning to the lives of many people across our country. And they join with me in thanking you for the gift of this mass. We celebrate the feast of St. Francis of Assisi. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God be with you all. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, by whose gift St. Francis of Assisi was conformed to Christ in poverty and humility, grant that by walking in his footsteps we may follow your Son and through joyful charity come to be united with you. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job made this response to the words of the Lord. I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning, and he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. In all the land there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and his children's children four generations. And Job died old and full of days. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your face shine on me. Lord, let your face shine on me. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. It is good for me that I was humbled, so that I might learn your statutes. Lord, let your face shine on me. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right. And that in faithfulness you have humbled me. By your appointment they stand today, for all things are your service. I am your 
your servant, give me understanding, so that I may know your decrees. The unfolding of your words give light, it imparts understanding to the simple. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The 70 disciples returned with joy, saying, In your name, even the demons submit to us. Jesus said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then, turning to the disciples, Jesus said to them privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, my Lord, through our brother Sun, through sister Moon and all the stars, through brother Wind, through brother Fire, through sister Earth, our mother. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and let us sing Alleluia, Alleluia. O burning sun with golden beam and silver moon with softer gleam, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Who would compose a poem and a song like that? Who would be so in tune with nature? Brother, son, Sister Moon, Brother Wind, Brother Fire, Sister Earth, our Mother. Who but St. Francis of Assisi from the center of Italy? Many, many, many pilgrims go to Rome, and many more make sure to include a visit to Assisi 
bit further north. Over 830 years ago, St. Francis was born there into a well-off family. His father was wealthy, a silk merchant, business was good, a life of ease lay ahead. And Francis was outgoing and popular, a leader among the uh, party-going teenagers. And then, at the age of 25, as he set out to be a crusader in the Holy Land, he had a dream. In that dream, he heard a voice saying, you've got it all wrong. Turn around and go back home. Repair my house. Well, Francis believed that God had spoken to him in that dream. And he took to heart the final words of it. Repair my house. He turned around and set about repairing churches in and around Assisi for three years. His father told him, you are a madman. And then it dawned on Francis that God was not asking him to repair buildings, but to rebuild the church itself, to repair people's lives. His father disowned him, but many joined him. And he founded the Franciscans. <clears throat> Nine years later, <clears throat> they numbered about 5,000. Think of that, a growth from zero to 5,000 in nine years. And of course, today, we have a Jesuit taking the name Pope Francis. <clears throat> very few, very, uh, several stories about Francis. Uh, one day, he came face to face with a leper. Earlier in life, he, he would have passed by on the other side of the road. But this time, he got off his horse, maybe he got off his high horse, and kissed the leper's hand. He gave away his money. He gave away his good clothes. He wore other people's cast-offs. He slept in the open air. He begged for food. He took the gospel words literally, Sell your belongings, give to the poor, take nothing with you on your journey, take up your cross daily. And the strange thing was that people joined him. The rich, the poor, people from the villages around, country people out on the farms, the educated, and uh, the never-gone-to-school people, merchants and beggars, so many different types of people seemed attracted to him. And then there's the famous story that he was passing an almond tree one day. And it was spring, and there should have been some buds on that tree, but there were no leaves, no sign of any growth. And the story says, Francis spoke to the tree. Sister, speak to me of God. And the almond tree blossomed. Francis became the first to teach that the earth itself is holy. At Christmas in the year 1223, he built the first creche, the first Christmas crib. And its popularity has spread all over the world now as a way to celebrate Christmas. In his early 40s, he became half blind and seriously ill. And two years before his death, he, rece he received uh, the stigmata, marks of the real and painful wounds of the crucified Christ 
on his hands, on his feet, and in his side. On his deathbed, he prayed over and over again the last verse of his poem, The Canticle of the Sun. Be praised, my Lord, through our sister bodily death, from whose embrace no living person can escape. Woe to those who die in mortal sin. Happy those she finds doing your most holy will. Praise and bless my Lord, and give thanks and serve him with great humility. Francis died in his hometown of Assisi on October the 3rd, 1226, at the age of 44. He is now the patron saint of Italy and, of course, the patron saint of all ecologists, all those who consider the earth sacred. I go back to the beginning. Brother, son, Sister moon and all the stars, brothers wind and air, sister water, brother fire, sister earth, our mother. In thanksgiving for creation, for this earth of ours, for all the planets, we pray to the Lord. That we may treat the earth with dignity and not just throw rubbish on it. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all who have asked our prayers for their intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord deep peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the God of peace to you. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we bring you these offerings, O Lord, we pray that we may, right, may we be rightly disposed for the celebration of the mystery of the cross, which St. Francis so ardently embraced through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church truthful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love. And that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all our bishops. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her husband, with the, with the apostles, and all the saints who have pl pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You. Let us offer one another the peace of the Lord.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. With those of you at home, join with me in this admonition of St. Augustine. Therefore, once and for all, this short command is given to you. Love and do what you will. If you keep silent, keep silent by love. If you speak, speak by love. If you correct, correct by love. If you pardon, pardon by love. Let love be rooted in you, and from the root, nothing but good can grow. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, through these holy gifts which we have received, that imitating the charity and apostolic zeal of St. Francis of Assisi, we may experience the effects of your love and spread them everywhere for the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go, our Mass is ended. Our thanks to an anonymous donor from Toronto, Ontario, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible.